Hello and welcome to this episode of GM Talks, where I'm gonna show you some real Grandmaster play from, well, high level chess uh, with the big Danish talent Jonas Bulbjerg and myself uh, played last week in the Danish league. You're gonna get some, uh, well, a lot of positional refinements, uh, the understanding of chess, uh, a little bit about the history of variations and uh, and things that computers don't understand and things like that and also where uh, humans have problems so let's get into the game i am white uh, against uh, jonas and i thought i should was going to play uh, rasmus svane so i prepared for him and he didn't show <laughs> well apparently it was never meant to show uh, but they missed him because they didn't win the championship scannerboard uh, but they still won the match against us uh, i play knight f3 uh, that's sort of my go-to move against uh, strong players um, it's a flexible uh, move and also usually i like it against young players because they're not really sure what to do i was expecting him to play uh, c5 here which he usually does uh, then i can return um, get into a sicilian or i can do something else instead he played knight f3 uh, and g3 and d5 and we are heading for some sort of a ready um, of course these are all aimed at the center in the beginning of the game everybody is fighting for control of the center you fight to get some space advantage you fight to get some uh, good position for your pieces or a favorable pawn structure and things like that uh, i'm uh, i've been playing this uh, king's indian attack in in sort of uh, with with white for for some time i'm not sure i really trust the king's indian for black uh, but with white where you have tempo one tempo more it's um it's it's probably more playable even though uh Grishuk said about it that um that he is um that it's the king's indian defense and even when you play it with white you should remember it's still a defense uh, I'm not sure about it. Okay, and he plays e6, meaning that he's okay with some sort of Catalan uh, after d4 and c4. But uh, I'm uh, I'm not a big fan of the Catalan at the moment. Uh, in, it's very theoretical. And by the way, I lost on Sunday with Black in the Catalan. I might show that game actually because it shows uh, the the trouble you have when you don't study chess all the time, uh, basically. Okay, so this is the King's Indian attack, and here I had prepared uh, for Svane this weird move. The, this move was played by, um, well, it's been played by a lot of players, but I, I saw it when uh, Richard Rapport played. The idea behind this weird move uh, is that if, for instance, Black goes c5 here, well, we can show it, uh, then I would go e4, sacrificing a pawn, and uh, why definitely get great compensation for the pawn with something knight e5, there will be some juicy squares here and so on. And if, for instance, black does not play, uh, take on e4, for instance, play something like this, then you play e5, and after this move here, you have gotten this move in for free without having to to do some things like this that means why can probably play more aggressive with maybe rook e1 and maybe even c4 with white and put the knight on more active square than than going usually the knight takes this uh, this maneuver and then go here and here and trying to create an attack or sometimes here uh, anyway uh, maybe the knight could just sit on this square instead uh, after c4 and attack black center so this is uh, is is definitely a more flexible line for white you most of the time you want to play knight f uh, bishop f4 and h4 but you're not sure you want to do this knight maneuver so uh, having uh, the option to do it later or not at all is definitely an advantage okay so but uh, Jonas played knight c6 which is a strange move uh, sort of uh, because it blocks in this pawn this makes uh, actually uh, this move uh, look pretty good actually <laughs> because um, I'm not sure that uh, that the, the Catalan uh, kind of structure here you want your knight on c6 well I'm sure you don't want it there uh, but black could maybe I was afraid he might go knight c4 but after something like this 
maybe this is not something you should really be care be dangerous maybe you can just play something like this actually uh, i think and and put the nut here and so on i think white is probably better so i think d4 is probably a good idea in this situation but i was uh, i was some sort of more inspired to play something um sort of aggressive i don't want to play something like uh, like this for instance because then black will probably go here and win the bishop and it will be strange for me to to how to part with the bishop actually i have to be careful now that he, he does not trap it maybe he's already threatening to trap it with d5 let's go all the way there so so i i, I cannot really play normal moves uh, a move I could I might play is a3. Uh, still, it seems like uh, the the right move, but the computer do, do not, does not like it. it's c4. Uh, this is, is is the kind of move you often play in these positions. I'm I'm hitting for some sort of a Benoni, and he did play d4 here. Uh, if I'm allowed to take, I think I'm I'm, I'm better. He, he does not really have a good move. If you play bishop d he takes, I'll just take it and have a slight advantage. Uh, but d4 uh, is a nice move, uh, and knight a3 looks uh, natural. Uh, it's it's often going here, both to sometimes attack this, but mostly to uh, to support the advance of the b pawn in this situation. With d4, black has gotten a Benoni structure, and uh, the the best move here is is definitely this one. Um, of course, there was uh, there was maybe even this stretch. So, but Black is is just preparing this, winning a tempo. So, basically, getting the tempo he spent on e5 back, uh, because White played bishop f4. So, so we will have sort of a a position where I spent the tempo, he spent one tempo, and he's gotten, uh, and I get had to waste another tempo. A5. So he's afraid of of something with with b4 will come soon. At the moment, I'm actually might be threatening b4. So we play a5 and b3. b3 does look a little bit weird. Uh, the a5 is of course to, to, to prevent this pawn. It's a very normal move in Benoni structures. b3 looks a bit strange. Um, the thing is, uh, when I was younger, I studied the old Benoni. That is Benoni where you don't exchange the e-pawns. Uh, this pawn here for this pawn here uh, where you have a modern benoni it's also with the uh, but it's with the knight here and this pawn boxed in and uh, we'll see a typical maneuver for uh, for the old benoni in in just a second so e5 makes sense and here comes the big revelation that looks strange uh, the natural move looks something like uh, like to put it here to prepare this but after knight c5 you don't have a sensible move uh, and the knight is very strong on c5 so you basically can't tolerate it it's it's sitting here this is always a good square for for a knight in the benoni where it it hits all the weak spots uh, and all the things you want to control uh, so it's it's a very good uh, place for the knight and in, in general you cannot allow the knight to sit there for long you have to challenge it somehow if a knight sits there for some time you you position just gonna break down so this is the point of the, the game so why what is what's why's plan uh white plan is basically well natural move for black here would be rook e8 so maybe something like this and i would maybe play something like this and maybe something like this and i will probably take here take here and then i'll play a3 and then i'll play rook b1 and i'll play b4 and if it goes something like queen e7 i'll go queen c1 and queen b2 and rook b1 and b4 so he will not be able to prevent b4 um, this bishop is strong here the knight will come out because after b4 and he takes takes i'll play b5 and then the knight will come out here sometimes i'll play e3 and basically white can get a lot of active play under white squares uh, and and this bishop can often be 
a bit clumsy. So you just ba basically hit it. So that's the idea behind bishop a3. Of course, this position is still, I still think after rook e8, it's probably slightly better for white. It's, uh, it's just difficult to play for, 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 for black in this structure. And, uh, and I know what I'm doing, so I, it will be easy for me to just make all the right moves. Uh, preparing b4, it's really simple. You don't have anything else to do. So that's what you do in, in that situation. Uh, here, uh, Jonas played this move, which looks very smart uh, because he's getting rid of that bishop that is often a problem for, for in the Benoni for 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 the player playing against the Benoni, but the the thing here is that it's it's too far away from the center, um, and that gives me the chance after this to immediately strike here to get uh, the the pieces out, and and now if he's, he's I'm allowed to take here, the d pawn might become weak, and I still have this plan of a3, rook b1, and b4, and so on, and I will have good pieces. It will not be so easy to attack uh, e3, and I can also just defend it with the knight here. So he, he probably felt compelled to take, which looks natural. Uh, take with, with the e pawn makes this look silly. I was, by the way, a little bit afraid of e4, just destroying my pawn structure uh, I don't like that very much uh, so but it's a, it seems natural to play knight takes e3 and I'm basically contemplating playing under white squares I have a this nice white squared bishop I have all these white squares and I have all my pawns on white so I'm trying to blow him away on the white squares of course he still have a white squared bishop but his knight is is offside here I still think, uh, but the structure is, is of course better for black. Uh, I have a weak backward pawns on d4. I would like to get rid of that, but even if it's the exchange, uh, if I don't get anything, we'll just have a symmetrical pawn structure and that will be equal. So uh, basically very interesting position. Uh, here he starts to, but it's difficult to play and especially difficult to play with black uh, because white is very active and his moves sort of gives themselves uh, so after something like this which looks very natural uh, black is basically just preparing something like uh, uh, knight b4 knight e7 and get rid of whatever lands but white is fast here uh, the the pieces are coming and you have to be uh, careful at the moment i'm probably threatening this move which would be very unpleasant uh, and I might even be trading f4, or bishop e4, and stuff like that. So, uh, scary moment uh, for, for black. He felt compelled to, to, and I play this move, attacking the queen, getting more space. I have very, very active knights at the moment. And uh, he went here, looked a bit passive to me, but not that bad. But it felt really nice to play this move with the rook opposite the the queen here at the moment black is, is going back because he thinks okay my structure is fine if i just don't get, make any concessions uh, finish my development and so on i will be better or at least not worse so and white is trying to put so much as much tempo as he can into his game so every move should come with a lot of force uh, to really trying to blow black out of the water before his ships are out of the harbor uh, and black has to take here. Also, if, if I was allowed one more move, I'd probably play f5 and just cementing uh, the white square's uh, uh, superiority. So he takes, and but that allows the rook into the game. So, and we, we see this, this rook here. And white is now very active, and I was starting to feeling really uh, optimistic about uh, white's chances in this position. He played here, that's probably a mistake. Um, the thing is, uh, and this is where, uh, so far, I'm, I'm very happy with, with all the, the moves I made. They're very human, natural, uh, positional. But here is a, is a situation where the computer, <laughs> if you could have given the position to the computer, it would just have won this game, uh, I think. Because in this situation, I played a 2 on b4, but this move is actually strong, and it looks crazy uh, i was looking at this move but the thing is i thought well it's not threatening anything if he just goes uh, what what am i threatening but the thing is okay let's see if he takes takes and uh, actually king h8 is, is not the best move so you could just keep it and, and something like, and here white just plays d4 so he has a very very strong bishop here 
but basically you're just preparing to double everything on the F file and win something. Uh, you so if if it was white, he does need like two to three moves, and rook h4, and black is totally blasted, uh, and. The thing is, black does not have counterplay here. So this is actually uh, clearly better for white. It's not really clear how uh, black should play. A uh, line goes like this. And this is where my brain just become fuzzy. Uh, but here, even in this position, um, white is, and you probably play something like this, uh, white is just having a great attack. Uh, F7 might be falling and, and so on, and it's Knight h7 is possible. I think on this move, I think this move is might be even be good. Uh, so this stuff is is really not easy for black, for sure. Um, I'm not sure this works anyway. So knight e7 would have been good. Uh, it's the kind of move I look at, and then I realize mm, I can't. I can't calculate this. Uh, I think first, first my my brain sort of stops here and say. Mm, what what was the threat? And then the computer just wants to go d4 uh, and says and said that okay you're just better here and you're gonna go, go something like uh, like this move this move and uh, black can take but uh, it will just lead to a bad position for him so you're just better so this is the kind of things that's very difficult. Well, I did what I did was not bad. Uh, I, I he played knight b4. I took the knight. And uh, I play d4. So now I have a uh, better center. This knight is weird, and I do have uh, an open file, so I still have a clear advantage. Uh, but uh, he, he just needs to, to relocate this knight here, and uh, suddenly I might be in trouble uh, as well. Sometimes he can kick this knight with f5, and it will be very uh, troublesome. So c6, uh, the, well, clearly the best move. Uh, and queen h5. Uh, of course, the trick is he cannot take here because of, of this check, and the rook is falling. So I was still very optimistic here, and, uh, and he played uh, queen e7, uh, and I did not see this move, and I thought that was a very good move. It turns out it's not that good actually, uh, but it again it demands that you are very strong in calculation and imaginative attacking chess. Uh, and to be honest, <laughs> that I'm probably not very strong in this uh, area of the game uh, because here uh, the computer definitely uh, prefer uh, rook e1. And I thought, rook e1, what are you talking about? Then comes f5, so let's see, f5, uh, and the knight is, uh, is trapped. Because uh, the queen is, is having, and the and it, the computer just say, yeah, I'll just go d4, um, and, <laughs> and 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 this is just uh, this is just uh, winning for for white. after something like this. Um, white is is threatening very very badly uh, this move, uh, and uh, it's and of course also this move, or even uh, this move uh, because of this uh, is hanging. So so here. Black is, is basically just uh, lost. Um, there's, there's, there's nothing to do here, but it's not easy to see. And I don't blame myself for not seeing uh, that this is, is winning. It's, it was not that. And I, I, I thought for a very long time here, and I didn't even consider Rugi 1 F5 G4. Uh, I didn't see it. So it was not on the radar. I'm sure uh, a guy like uh, Michal Tal or guys like that, they will see something like this in an in a heartbeat but for me not so much uh, and i was starting to get worried about f5 um, because it, it it looked like i was thinking mm, maybe i can play rook f1 but then f5 was was very annoying and and i had to go and then he maybe <laughs> even play g5 or something and i was mm, i don't i don't like it uh, my knight is is, is losing. but i so i said okay i'm gonna keep the knight on g4 on a4 so i played g4 uh, to prevent f5 that is could be answered by g4. So this is a typical uh, thing when you don't see it, you don't see it, and uh, and there's just nothing you can do about it, uh, sort of. But I also thought g4 was pretty cool because uh, I'm threatening to 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 get go here, attack here, and if he defends with something, then maybe g5 uh, will bring a big attack uh, coming his way. So g4 looked very good. 
he found a nice defense here, rook d4. Um, the, the trick is, um, that was also a problem with rook f1, is that it, check here, uh, he just takes back with the pawn, and after rook takes d4, he has queen e3 check. And so, something like this, and he can just do like, so this is the trick uh, that I'm worried about, and I just lost a piece, and I'm gonna lose the game, and all these things. So. So I, I just played rook a f1, uh, and I'm still uh, pretty uh, confident here. Uh, if he goes bishop e6 now, which is, would be the natural thing, then knight f6 is of course very strong. Um, especially winning the exchange when his pawn structure is completely destroyed is a big advantage. Uh, unfortunately, uh, well he's a cool cat of course, uh, big talent, 2600, so he took on e4. Smart move. Um, I took back and played bishop e6. Uh, so I'm a clear exchange up, but he's got one pawn. And another thing is all my pawns are on white uh, and I have a white squared bishop that is sort of unemployed at the moment. So to be honest, I kind of lost all enthusiasm here. Um, knight c5 and he has some compensation. I play queen e5. Um, to be honest, uh, the problem is if he doesn't do anything stupid here, it will be very difficult to win. He, I played Queen E5 and offered a draw. It was based, mostly uh, based on, on the fact that I thought that we were losing the match clearly, so there was no point in me playing on. But then a miracle happened and uh, and we, we did win a, a game that was totally lost. Uh, so that was uh, pretty cool. Uh, but uh, but we also won one that was uh, was... Well, uh, last one that w was was good. So I should have played on. I didn't know that. Uh, the thing is, against a strong player that will defend well, it will not be easy to win, and you might even lose this kind of game. So I was okay. We can have a draw. It's fine. It's okay. Uh, still, maybe a little bit uh, weak to to offer a draw in this position with an exchange up for a pawn. Uh, I think the computer will say you have something like a pawn up. Uh, the thing is, I don't really fancy playing. I like to ex uh, sacrifice the exchange. I don't like uh, s sort of um, uh, winning the exchange and having to to prove that he does not have compensation. I think that's that's tough uh, in general. Uh, so I, I would prefer the, the almost. Uh, I know I prefer uh, black, but also I know that it's gonna be a long game from here. He's not Jonas. Not gonna lose this uh, fast in any way, uh, and he will have compensation all the way, some sort of compensation. So I'll have to play uh, good chess for a long time, and I'm I was not sure I could do that. Uh, I didn't sleep that well anyway. A lot of bad excuses. Uh, this was DM Talks. I hope you enjoyed these videos. Please give your comments. And if you like it, remember to subscribe, like, share, whatever. Remember, sharing is caring. This was DM Talks. Thank you for watching.